Karni here. So in this video, we're going to talk about a very critical, important topic in medicinal chemistry, and that's opiates and opioids. Well, are they different? And if they're different, what is the difference? Look at this. I have two different videos, both on medicinal chemistry. One says morphine and related opiates. And second one says is the opioid drug, which is methadone. So are they different? Yes, there is some difference. Even though we use these terms loosely, all these opiates and opioids have a different mode by which they are prepared in the labs or they're extracted out and how they're used. So let's talk about opiates first. So opiates, simple, easy definition is they are all natural. So how are they obtained? They are obtained with a natural source such as like morphine, remember, we get that from the poppy seeds. Then we have some common opiates and those are, as I said, morphine, codeine, those will be the easiest one to think about. Now, I would not add here dimorphine or heroin because that is not really completely natural and we'll talk about that in a minute. And what about opioids? Opioids are created to some extent in the lab. That means these are substances that are synthesized or they could be partly synthesized. So the whole process could start from scratch from the starting material and we get the final product or we may obtain a starting material from some natural sources but to get it to the final product we need to have partly synthesis now the active ingredients are the one which are created by and we can use the word here chemical reaction so difference is they are not natural they are chemically produced which are those common opioids which are under this category and one of them is in that video which I showed you methadone and the second one is dimorphine or which you call as heroin. Now we all know that these terms are used pretty loosely. So some people classify it into four categories. One of them is endogenous opioids. They are still called opiates because they are natural and they are produced inside the body. So endogenous means inside the body. And the examples for that are encephalines or also dynorphins. Then there are opioid alkaloids which are natural one like we talked about morphine or codeine. Then there is semi-synthetic which are using some natural resources and then converting that to a different compound. They will be called as opioids and one of the example is dimorphine or what we call as heroin. Then there is synthetic opioid which is right from scratch. We begin from the starting material in the lab and that example is methadone. So kind of that explains you different ways opiates and opioids are classified. Now, all these opiates and opiates, they bind to the receptor. And depending upon how they bind and how they create the effect, we also have two different categories. And they are called as agonist and antagonist. Well, there is one more term which is partial agonist. So they are neither completely agonist or they are not completely antagonist. So what are those? Well, agonist is the one which will bind completely. It will be fully activating the receptor and therefore they will produce 100% full effect. Then there is something called partial agonist. As the word says, they will only partially activate the receptor and therefore they will also have partial effect. So they won't be full agonist, they will be partial agonist. And antagonists are the one 
they will bind to the receptors but they will not activate them so it's without activating the receptors binding happens so each of the compound will play a different role based upon where it falls so let's maybe look at our familiar compounds we have morphine codeine and dimorphine where do they fall into agonist or antagonist and i'm going to tell you right now all of these fall into the agonist category so that means all these compounds bind to the receptors completely fully and they produce 100% effect so they are considered as strong analgesic compound also they bind to the receptors so tightly so that's why many of them they result into problems with addiction and all now here is another series and as we talked about morphine is an antagonist then there's a compound buprenorphine it looks pretty similar to morphine but that is a partial agonist and then there is naltrexone this is going to be an antagonist so look at carefully the structures the main core structure is same for all of those so what is difference the difference is what is on the side chain it's also what we have over here and then all that makes a difference in making the compound agonist versus partial agonist versus an antagonist so just by changing the groups we convert the compounds into different category <laughs> isn't that crazy <laughs> as it sounds and if you are curious and want to know some examples here are the examples for agonist morphine codeine heroin or which is dimorphine oxycodone methadone all these are full agonist that means they bind very tightly to the receptor and for partial agonist we got buprenorphine and tramadol and finally for antagonist what do we have we have naltrexone and naloxone those are the one which classify as antagonist okay now are you ready to learn something more opioid receptors are different types so depending upon different types of receptors we can also classify those opioids and opioids in different category but don't get confused these are the types of receptors known so far so there is mu kappa and delta receptors and there's also one which is called as ORL1 and we won't probably go much into detail with the last one yet but we'll talk about these three briefly so that is buprenorphine and we did mention that this qualifies to be a partial antagonist to some what extent but now if you want to know why it falls in that category with respect to mu receptor this is partial agonist with respect to kappa it is antagonist and with respect to delta it is a weak antagonist so there is a lot to know about the opioid receptors and opioid compounds and how they work but anyway you kind of got the idea about the terms opioids and opioids and how they are differed and how they are classified differently by scientists also we talked about agonist and antagonist and partial antagonist and then we added one more layer by saying there are different receptors and any opioid or opioid compound may bind differently with each type of receptor and of course there is a lot more to talk about this topic so stay tuned i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you again in next video until then bye bye